hello students till now we have discussed about the overview of wireless communication after that introduction to the cellular telephone system after that we have seen a frequency reuse concept what is it how it works after that handoff strategies we also have studied co channel and adjustment adjacent channel interface also seen okay in today's lecture what we are going to discuss is the block diagram of mobile handset okay we like everyone is using mobile phone but we should aware what is inside it what are the technologies what are the different devices or electrical circuits used inside your mobile phone okay to understand that we are going to study the block diagram of mobile handset so as you all of you can see the diagram the diagram will con contain the mic of the very first thing is a mic after that there is a compression circuit there is a pre emphasis circuit fm modulator class c rf power amplifier there is one antenna there is duplexer circuit a uh, receiver rf amplifier is also there again there is a mixer circuit if and uh, demodulator what is if intermediate frequencies and demodulators after that there is a de emphasis circuit expansion speaker keypad microprocessor and logic circuit frequency synthesizer so these are multiple blocks which are present in the block diagram of your mobile handset okay now we'll do what we'll understand each one of the block in detail okay what is the block what is its function why it is called so and why that block is placed at this position okay so we will start with the mic what is mic like we have seen we know what is sensors what are actuators so mic is one kind of sensor what is the basic uh, meaning of sensor sensor is a device or electrical circuit which will sense some physical quantity okay now in case of mic mic is going to sense the voice as a physical quantity okay mic is going to sense the voice and it will convert that voice or that physical quantity into its equivalent electrical quantity so this is what is the basic function of sensor what is the basic function of sensor is to convert any physical quantity into its equivalent electrical quantity here we have sensor as a mic and mic is going to perform the function physical to electrical conversion that means it is going to convert voice into its equivalent electrical signal so everybody is like clear with the first uh first block that is mic mic is a sensor which converts physical signal into its equivalent electrical signal that means precisely we can say that mic will convert physical quantity voice into its equivalent electrical quantity after that there is a compression circuit okay what is compression now we know ki we are going to talk on your mobile phone okay and while we are talking the voice which we are using or the volume of our voice or the frequency of our voice decides the bandwidth okay if we use our voice as it is and if we want to transmit that over a distance then it will require a large bandwidth okay if we co compress that voice then the bandwidth which is going to required for transmission will be less and that is obviously useful thing that is why we will need a compressor which will compress the entire frequency of your physical signal that is voice okay what is the reason behind using compression block at this position to reduce the bandwidth okay so this is all about the second block we have third block as a pre emphasis circuit now what is pre emphasis pre emphasis is a process of increasing amplitude of a certain frequency relative to the others in a signal in order to help them override noise which it and this pre emphasis is done in the transmitting end now what is pre emphasis in very short or simple manner pre emphasis is a circuit which will increase the strength or magnitude of your input signal why to increase the strength or magnitude of input signal because if there is any noise which is present that noise should not cover our entire signal okay our main signal will should not get mixed with the noise that is why if our uh, input signal frequency is very high then it can easily diagnose or it can easily remove that noise signal or it can easily get away from that noise signal and it can pass further right now uh, pre emphasis is a prior to process now there is a question why to use it why to use pre emphasis Uh, like we know the process of detecting frequency modulated signal in a receiver produces a noise in a spectrum that rises in frequency okay whatever the noise we are going to have in a entire circuitry that noise will um, show or that will uh, that will that noise will detect in the modulated signal in receiver okay and to avoid that 
we are using this pre emphasis circuit it increases the magnitude of high signal frequency right ultimately what is going to happen the signal to noise ratio whatever the signal we have and whatever the noise that gated in added into the system the ratio of signal to noise is reduced uh not signal to noise ratio is reduced noise is reduced and signal to noise ratio is improved all right next block is fm modulator what is fm modulator fm modulator is a audio uh, is a device or electrical circuit we can say in which audio signal is modulated onto a radio frequency carrier okay in case of fm that is frequency modulation correct fm is what frequency modulation what is going to happen here our audio signal is modulated onto a radio frequency correct now here the amount by which that signal is moved up or down is important okay in case of fm modulation the amount by which a signal is moved up or a signal is moved down that amount is going to be very important and that amount is called as a deviation by how what is your original signal and by how much amount you increased your signal that is deviation or what was your original signal and by how much amount you move down your signal that is again called as a deviation all right so this is all about fm modulator after that we have class c power amplifier now there are many amplifier many types of amplifier class a class ab class b so multiple amplifiers are there why specifically to use class c amplifier here because the magnitude of power of given input signal is very high okay whatever is the efficiency of class c power amplifier we have that is very high as compared to other types of amplifier efficiency of class c amplifier is very high that is why we are using class c amplifier here now there is uh, something written class c rf power amplifier now what is the like why power amplifier why cannot we use a simple amplifier or why power amplifier because we want to increase the magnitude of power of given input signal okay we just don't need to increase its uh, strength or its amplitude we need to increase the magnitude of power of a given signal correct that is why class c power amplifier use is used in the mobile handset all right so next one is your antenna now it is like very general thing uh, in case of mobile we have only single antenna but basically there are uh, two types of antenna transmitting antenna and receiving antenna now depending on the location at which location the antenna is placed its working is defined by it correct if your antenna is located at the transmitting end then what is its function it will convert electrical waves into it, its equivalent electromagnetic waves or radio waves okay what antenna is going to do it will convert electrical signal into its equivalent electromagnetic signal this is the function of transmitting antenna in case of receiving antenna the electromagnetic waves are uh, converted into the electrical signal so these are the two basic types of antenna depending on the location at which they are placed its function is decided all right in case of mobile phones we have only single antenna that means the single antenna is performing both the task okay it is going to convert electrical energy into its equivalent electromagnetic or radio waves and electromagnetic or radio waves into its equivalent electrical so the single antenna is going to perform both the functions all right after that we have a duplexer circuit what is duplexer circuit a circuit that allows bidirectional communication okay duplex is what at a time both way communication this is what is a duplexer circuit over a single path if you if we are able to communicate from both the sides then we can just say that there is a duplexer circuit for example in radar or any other radio communication system duplexer isolates receiver from the transmitter now what is the main function of this duplexer it will isolate the transmitter from the receiver okay and while they are permitting while permitting them to the share common antenna even they are transmitter and receiver both are using a common antenna but this duplexer circuit will do what it will isolate the transmitter from the receiver circuit once we are done with the duplexer we have a receiver rf amplifier 
Now, what is RF amplifier? Radio frequency amplifier. It can amplify any frequency from the band 10 kilohertz to 100 gigahertz. No matter which is the frequency, if that frequency lies between 10 kilohertz to 100 gigahertz, this receiver RF amplifier is going to amplify that frequency. Now, what are the special characteristics of receiver amplifier or receiver RF amplifier? Linearity. That is, if input increases, its out output is also going to increase. If input decreases, its output is also going to decrease. So no matter what is your input, output, it is going to produce you the output and that output is proportional, directly proportional to the input. After that, efficiency is very high in case of RF amplifier. Output power and signal gain are the two more characteristics of receiver RF amplifier. After that, we have a mixer circuit. Now, what is mixer circuit? It is going to mix the two or more inputs. Now, which two inputs we have to the mixer circuit? From the frequency synthesizer and one is from the receiver RF amplifier. Now, what is frequency synthesizer? It generates a range of frequency from a single reference frequency. Okay, frequency synthesizer is a circuit. It is going to increase or it is going to produce or generate a range of multiple frequencies from the single reference frequency. If I set my reference frequency as 10 kilohertz, that frequency synthesizer circuit is going to produce a multiple uh, frequencies that you can just refer as a range of frequency. All right. After uh, frequency synthesizer and mixer circuit, we have IF and demodulator circuit. Now, what is IF? It is an intermediate frequencies. Okay. There is an IF amplifier and demodulator circuit. Now, what is the function of IF amplifier? IF amplifier will do uh, what it will. Uh, it is the general amplifier whose gain is set to the 75 decibels. Okay, in general, gain of amplifier is decided by the uh, users, but in case of IF amplifier, the gain is standardly or widely set as a 75 decibels. Okay. After that, demodulator circuit, IF and demodulator. We have both circuits at the same position. Demodulator circuit is going to do what? It is uh, like why we are using demodulator? Because demodulator circuit is used to recover information content from the modulated carrier wave. No, initially, what we have done here in the frequency modulator circuit, we have modulate our waveform. What is modulation? Mixing of two different waveforms. One is modulated, one is carrier. So we have mixed two waveforms. Now, here comes the point where we need to separate out the waveforms. And which circuit is going to separate the waveforms? This circuit, IF, sorry, demodulator circuit. Demodulator circuit will do what? It will separate out the signal or original information signal from the modulated signal. All right. After I have amplifier and demodulator circuit, we have de-emphasis circuit. Now, what is de-emphasis? It is exactly opposite to the things which, which we have done in the pre-emphasis. Okay. So basically, de-emphasis is opposite to the pre-emphasis. What we have done in pre-emphasis circuit, we have boosted our input signal so that the signal uh, so that the signal converting back into the original level is the emphasis. Correct. What we have done in the pre-emphasis, we have boosted the input signal. Now, if we want to get back that signal to the original level, we have to de-emphasize that signal. And that is the process which is done in the de-emphasis circuit. Okay. This de-emphasis process is always done in the receiver section. And we have seen that pre-emphasis is always done in transmitting section. Now, the next one is the expansion. Now, again, expansion is exactly opposite to that of your compression. What happened in compression? We have compressed the entire frequency of physical voice to reduce the bandwidth. Here, what we are going to do? Here, there is no point of bandwidth. Correct. So, that is why we are going to expand or we are going to increase the uh, frequency of physical voice. All right. After that, the last point is the speaker speaker is what it is an actuator now what is the basic function of actuator whatever the electrical signal they have it have to convert that electrical signal into its equivalent physical quantity here speaker is going to get electrical input and that electrical input that speaker is going to convert into the voice voice is again a physical quantity all right after that 
there is a keypad now we know to in to store information or to enter information in in your mobile phone or to save someone's number or to type anyone's number or to do multiple task we need a keypad okay keypad is a general uh, input device to the mobile hand, mobile handset and the next one, and the last one is your microprocessor and logic circuit now uh the switching of channels and power level by the remote control base station is called through microprocessor control through the microprocessor the logic circuit we have like we are going to st uh, study the logic circuit of microprocessor and logic unit which are used in your mobile handset now also due to the microprocessor and digital circuit digital circuit is what it is going to be memory additional functions with the handsets are available to the users now what is going to happen as we are having a memory inside our mobile phones we are we are able to store the data or we are able to store the information inside our mobile phones correct so uh, that is why this microprocessor and logic circuit is the important block now which kind of additional uh, circuits or additional functions we are going to get inside your mobile phone for example timing of calls at what time we have received which call like all this data is stored inside your mobile phone storing messages after that locking a phone a phone lock system is there uh, storing list of call numbers so uh, at what time i have like uh, dialed which number so this is what is the information which is stored inside the memory and for that we need a logic circuit so all these uh, facilities we are going to get inside your mobile phone handset and this is what is the block diagram of mobile handsets okay so in the next lecture we are going to study the um, cellular telephone unit uh, each unit we are going to study in detail there are multiple units for example transmitter unit receiver unit logic unit control unit frequency synthesizer unit so we are going to study these four five units in detail with the block diagram of each and every unit this is it for now we'll see the remaining part in the next lecture